Hi guys, uh, it's Christy again. This week I'm going to be painting a World War II German Africa Corps figure for you, and I believe that's one of the very few sort of major German uniform variants that I haven't talked about yet on this channel. In fact, I've already painted a Desert Rat, which is sort of the British equivalent for this theater of operations. Uh, I'll link to him below in the description box in case you're interested in seeing how the other side dressed. Now here's the model I'm going to be uh, demonstrating on. This is a, a figure by Artisan Designs and I have had various people complaining about the Artisan figures. Not everybody likes their style or how they look. They can sometimes be kind of crude or ugly or have weird proportions and they're just not to everybody's taste and I realize that but I personally just really like them uh, and I think that's what it is. They, they really are an acquired taste. Some people like how they look and some people don't. I personally do but I've tried with this model to choose one of their more sort of realistic, more sort of normally proportioned figures so as not to really bug people. Uh, generally speaking the sort of rough recruiter models or some of their earlier sculpts and things that they've done more recently tend to be a little bit more on the sort of normal, however you want to define that looking side. So, but again, I'm going to keep using them because I like them. <laughs> anyway, uh, this uniform is going to be a lot of brown and khaki as you might expect, but because this is an officer figure, I'm going to try really hard to work in some extra sort of little colorful details just to add a little bit more character to the whole look. So as usual, here are all the paints you're going to need to complete this model, except for what you use on the face and hands, of course. One real quick tip I want to give you, if you'd like to give your model a little bit more of a sunburn look, because it's really appropriate for a model like this, all you need to do is take some really bright red and mix it with uh, some glaze medium, make a really, really, really thin mix, so lots of glaze medium, not very much red, and then you can just kind of layer that on places like the chin and the cheeks and the face and build it up so that you get this little sort of more lobster-like look on your model which is going to be suitable of course especially for sort of northern european types like uh our soldier here probably would be now the africa corps jacket that you see them wearing a lot was a fairly distinctive kind of yellowy green khaki color uh, I'm using Vallejo Olive Gray as my base on the jacket, and I'm also going to be painting the uppers of his boots in that color because, in this case, at least the model's wearing these sort of, I don't know, desert boots, which had uh, uh, fabric cloth uppers that were that same sort of green color as the jacket, and then the bottoms were made out of some kind of leather. My first highlight color on the green areas is going to be brown violet, and I still don't understand why it's called brown violet, because it's neither brown or violet, but whatever. Uh, I chose this color, and again it's by Vallejo, because it's got, it's, it's a green, but with this slight yellowish cast to it, and that's really important, because that's kind of what's distinct about the World War II sort of African um, uniform color. It's, it's, it's a green, but it's got a good amount of yellow in it. Uh, and actually, you can see the brown violet, it's not a lot lighter here than the base, the, the olive gray that I just applied, but that's okay. You can build it up a little bit more, and we're going to start lightening it really quickly with some other colors, and then, you know, it'll just start to make sense. But I just want to put one layer of it on as is first, just so that everything is a little bit more unified looking. And the highlight process is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to be taking the brown violet and then I'm going to be grabbing some beige. You just want some sort of kind of yellowish color and I'm going to be start, you know, lightening basically. So my first highlight layer really just mixes in a small amount of the beige. And you do want to be careful that you don't go too quickly with this. You don't want to get too light too fast in other words. So take your time and build up several layers. Um, and it's just going to be a process kind of of uh, you know, finding the areas where light is hitting or are there any creases or wrinkles and really just picking those out and gradually defining them. Here I've added even more beige into my uh, brown violet and I'm continuing that highlighting uh, process, uh, just building up the color 
uh, the ground violet, even with the beige mix, it is a kind of a transparent color, so you can probably get a good mileage out of just layering the color uh, several times before you move up to the sort of the next paint color. So that's kind of nice. That will save you a little time. And also, at least with a jacket like this, uh, we've got all those pockets and seams and sort of elements on the front of it. Painting is actually, in my opinion, a lot easier. I mean, yes, you have to do some very careful, precise brush work, but if you're not so good at blending, then this kind of model is ideal because with something so small, you really aren't going to see very much blending anyway, except maybe on the sleeves and things like that. And I'm just continuing again with adding in more beige, keeping the sort of steps I make pretty gradual and making sure that when you've got sort of dark, deep wrinkles, like you can see some of those on the boots and some other areas that you really take care that you get a good blend between them because when you're um, finished, you don't want to have that look too stark. There needs to be a little bit of transition at least, if possible. This is my sort of final uh, major highlight shade that I'm putting on here. And again, same thing. You can see now I'm really starting to focus on the edges and any sort of folds or creases or seams or just small areas like all those pockets and the collars. I've been really emphasizing that I am still blending the color out at this point into sort of larger areas, but it's, it's, it's much more focused on just small, tiny areas. This color is bright enough that you don't want to get it all over the model too heavily. So, you, you know, you just need to be very sparing with where you apply these sort of highest highlight colors. Now before completely finishing up the green areas, I want to go ahead and paint the laces on his boots. <clears throat> and I'm just doing this with some black paint. I am using a number zero brush here because it's a lot easier that way. And all I'm doing here is just very carefully painting little thin sort of horizontal lines. Um, just, and just defining where those are going to be on the fronts of the boots. My absolute final layer on the jacket is almost pure uh, just beige, Vallejo beige, and I am really using this as an edge highlight to really give that final crisp definition to the pockets and the collars and along the seams uh, and all those sort of place on the boots. That was one reason I painted the um, uh, laces on the boots first, because now I can go in with this very thin color and sort of edge around uh, where the laces are, and I'll get just a neater uh, looking finish on the model, basically. Again, I'm working with a number zero brush here, uh, and when you're doing these sort of final edge highlights and you want a really nice, clean, precise, uh, smooth look, it's really good to work with a number zero. Uh, this is something I do started doing myself fairly recently, but it just really produces nicer results on your model. Now, uh, pants came in various colors. Uh, this guy's got on fairly, the sort of stereotypical sort of puffy uh, German pants. Uh, and I'm going for a variant that had the sort of kind of dark brownish uh, khaki color. So my base coat here is going to be a mixture of uh, Vallejo green brown, which I have darkened ever so slightly with some German camouflage black brown. To start highlighting the pants, I'm now just taking pure uh, green-brown and I'm going to just start uh, carefully building it over my uh, base color. This is again a fairly sort of transparent color. It doesn't 
coat really evenly sort of on the first layer so it's a real good candidate for just building up and you can get sort of stronger highlights with it in some areas and get keep it a little more subtle in other areas and at this point I'm really going to concentrate on making sure I get a good smooth blend between this color into sort of some areas which I want to leave the really dark base and there shouldn't be too many of them only areas of really extreme deep shadow like between the legs and some really deep creases and even then, I recommend you go sort of over the uh, all of the uh, dark brown areas, at least with a very thin coat of your green brown, just so that you'll get a more even, uh, better sort of transition once you apply uh, lighter colors. Now the, the brown of these pants was generally not particularly dark. There's probably kind of a range of acceptable shades. So if you want a darker variant, you can stick with that, or you can go for a lighter brown khaki. It's all going to be probably okay. I uh, went ahead and took some tan yellow here again from Vallejo, and I mixed it into the green brown. And I'm going to start using that to uh, layer the pants and make them lighter. The, the, the tan yellow, as you might guess, is a fairly yellowy brown uh, color, which is kind of what I want here. Uh, but again, I'm trying to keep it fairly thin. I don't want it to get too yellow too quickly. So you want to be just a little bit uh, delicate with that. And now I've just mixed in even more of the tan yellow. And I'm really applying really strong emphasis now to sort of any uh, folds or creases in the pants and trying to make sure that areas, uh, some areas are left darker that are down in the shadows and the ones where there's any real sharp divisions get a lighter treatment and get brightened a lot. So, you know, you can see I'm putting a lot of it on the knees and a lot of those sort of wrinkles at the back of the legs. It's fun to paint these sort of jodhpur like pants because you really get to have fun with the creases because they have that sort of interesting puff at the side. And it's just, it's, they're just a fun kind of pant to paint really. For my final highlight in, on the pants, I actually incorporated a little bit of Iraqi sand into um, the color I was just working with, uh, and that helps lighten it further. And the reason I went with Iraqi sand over, say, beige or more yellowy colors, I don't want it to get too, too yellow. And Iraqi sand has a little bit more of a gray or brown cast to it, so that keeps these pants from just being really, really yellow, because they're not that yellow, and they may actually even look a little bit yellower, I think, on film here than they are. Um, turned out to be in real life. Um, but if you don't like that look, you can, of course, uh, choose to use a, another sort of brown shade to lighten the pants, except for the, instead of, I should say, instead of the tan yellow. And then you'll get just a more uh, brown result. But again, this, this effect will appear a lot more sort of muted in real life. I'm now going to start working on the leather areas of the model, which includes sort of the bottoms of his boots, um, the strap I decided to do on his helmet and on his goggles, and then there's just a few little straps holding on like his ammo pouches and on his belt and his canteen, things like that. Uh, as always, I'm base coating these areas using German camouflage uh, black brown. Now, normally I would go and highlight my leather with uh, chocolate brown, but I wanted a little bit more of a red leather look, so I'm using saddle brown here instead. <clears throat> and I just mix some of it into the German camouflage black brown for my first layer, and I'm just lightly uh, building that up. Uh, it, there's very, actually, the leather areas on this model are very limited, so you shouldn't, you know, have too much trouble doing this. <clears throat> the only thing I would recommend is that uh, the, the order in which I painted the leather on him was not very clever because uh, a lot of those little straps, like on his um, canteen and on his ammo pouches, really should have been done at the very end after I finished painting the rest of those items. And by doing it at this point, I made it a lot more difficult for myself to paint the rest of those sort of areas of the model. So, you know, I recommend if you do this that you are a little more careful. Um, I then just took some pure saddle brown and layered it over top of the sort of mix uh, to lighten it up further. 
And then in order to get a sort of a final extra high highlight, I mixed a bit of Iraqi sand into my saddle brown and used that just to sort of mostly dab on areas where I wanted there to be some extra sort of emphasis or just uh, a, sort of an area of wear. I'm using a number zero brush for this again because these are very tiny details, uh, so it's a lot easier in my opinion. I'm really quickly going to paint the base of the canteen. Uh, the base color here is a mixture of saddle brown and some of that uh, green brown. The saddle brown I thought give it just gave it a nicer, redder, warmer cast. Uh, and then once I had the base on, I just went in back with some pure green brown and sort of applied some uh, careful highlights, sort of building them up over the top. And if and if you're not satisfied at that point, you can brighten it up even further just by mixing in a, like a little bit of beige or Iraqi sand or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And just sort of adding a very extra sort of, um, you know, bright highlight sort of on the areas where light would be hitting. I'm now going to have a little bit of fun with the insignia and piping. Um, members of the Africa Corps tended to have a uh, distinctive... Um, a color of piping on both their epaulets and on their collar and they often would wear sort of an Africa Corps armband as well. I have taken some of the tan yellow here and I just mixed in a little bit of the saddle brown uh, and I'm using that as my base and I'm just carefully uh, sort of roughing in where the piping is going to be. This is an NCO like a sergeant or whatever so he has fairly broad uh, piping on his epaulets and I'm also painting then around the top of his collar. Now for that cuff, that Africa cord cuff, I'm just going to make sure I make a pretty wide uh, band on his arm to start. Uh, then to highlight, just go ahead and take uh, pure tan yellow and start uh, going over the base that you uh, just applied. Just, you know, so you can see just that the darker color shows a little bit underneath uh, for extra definition. Uh, again, use a number zero brush for this. I shouldn't have to tell you. It'll just make your life a whole uh, lot easier. Uh, and, you know, just sort of, sort of finish defining this whole um, area with a lighter color. You can then finish... Uh, what I did anyway was just to go back in with uh, almost sort of with like just beige uh, and use that to apply sort of a final uh, bright highlight to the sort of yellow piping areas on the collar and the epaulets and uh, the cuff. If you don't think you've got enough definition between the piping and the green jacket, uh, you might want to go back in with like the green gray, for example, and make a very fine thin line in between those areas. Uh, that looks particularly good on the sort of the armband, I've got to say. Uh, to finish off the armband, uh, what I went ahead and did was just grab a little bit of black paint, and then you want to just paint a very thin line all the way around sort of the middle of your band, just so there's a teeny tiny bit of the yellow showing on the top and bottom. Uh, and then to finish, you just need to grab a little bit of white or ivory, in this case is what I used, and then just very finely sort of indicate some, like there's some little letters on there. Obviously you can't see them at this scale. I'm now going to be dealing with sort of the rest of the elements of his uniform, which include his helmet, his ammo pack, and, I, and in this case, the top of his water canteen, which are kind of a very light, sandy uh, color, I guess. Uh, I'm base coating them using the tan yellow again, and this is where I really, really, really wish that I had waited until later to paint the leather straps, because now I'm going to have to spend a lot more time fussing with this, not... Um, to you know mess up the leather areas that I painted you might even or I actually even found it easier to almost just go back and repaint the leather because it saved me time uh, you may notice with the canteen uh, a lot of times the tops of these on sort of the normal German uniform were more of a gray or dark green color but on the Africa Corps uniform you'll often see that they were the metal was painted sort of the same tan khaki color to sort of match the whole aesthetic and so yeah, just you just want to get a nice smooth even layer basically at this point of the tan yellow on all these sort of areas of the figure. In order to highlight further, I've now mixed some Iraqi sand into the tan yellow and I'm just going to be sort of carefully uh, building that up on the areas that I uh, just base coated. Uh, this is of course obviously the most important on the helmet because that's a really big area and you want to have a nice smooth even uh, look there. The thing to remember is 
this this shade again it's picking up very very yellow on the camera but it's naturally more sort of brown it's got a little bit more brown in it uh, and that's why we're using the Iraqi sand as a lightning color because that will sort of introduce a lot more brown into the whole look. I'm now going to finish highlighting those areas using just some pure uh, Iraqi sand, especially on the helmet. You want that to be nice and subtle. Uh, just kind of put it on the top and blend it out. Uh, I put on the um, ammo pouch and on the lid of the canteen, I actually also went and mixed some ivory in to get an even brighter, more stark edge highlight because the uh, ammo pouch particularly tended to be very bleached and white. You can also use that color if you want for more emphasis as it sort of along the bottom of the helmet. Now I'm going to be working on his scarf. It was pretty common for these guys to wear some kind of scarf just to keep the wind and the sand out. Uh, there's a standard issue one you see a lot that's just sort of the same color as the helmet, but I want it to be a little more interesting and different, especially since this is the NCO. So I'm giving him his own scarf. I just mixed some black and a little bit of ivory here to form a light, very light gray color, and I'm using that to sort of a block in a base coat on him and then I'm just gonna sort of highlight that with some pure ivory as a base. Uh, at the same time I've got the black and ivory out I've also been painting his goggles. Uh, I just base coated them in black and then used some very dark gray as sort of a highlight. Uh, the lenses I'm gonna leave them black in this case because they're coming up to keep the sun out so I'm thinking they're kind of more like sunglasses almost so I'm not gonna go with that usual blue thing I do a lot on goggles. I'm just painting them really dark black. I'm just going to apply a very sort of thin line of light gray sort of inside the top edge of the lens to just indicate a slight uh, reflection. But because uh, they're sunglasses, kind of sun goggles, I guess, you, you don't need to spend uh, as much time painting these, I would think, as something else. Just, but just use whatever black or gray colors, basically, you already have on hand to add some, you know, little, you know, highlights to them. Again, to just personalize the scarf more and, you know, also add a more sort of pop of color sort of effect to this otherwise fairly neutral uniform. I'm taking some Vallejo Dark Blue here and I'm using my number zero brush just to very carefully uh, draw a checked pattern on the scarf. You could just leave it plain white or you could make it plain red or some other accent color or just, you know, do a different pattern. But I thought blue would just really be sort of nice here. I even went ahead and did a little bit of quick highlighting by mixing a little bit of ivory into the blue and sort of emphasizing a few areas in the design. We're getting really close to being done. Uh, one of the last things left is his SMG. I'm just going to be base coating that to start out with uh, using black. Uh, these, these SMGs were very, very dark colored. They were not going to be particularly shiny. Uh, because they were sort of blacked or something during the production process. So most really shiny metal is gonna just maybe be a few dings or chips out of the surface. Uh, that being said, I did wanna get a little bit of highlighting on it and a little bit of a metallic look. So I just took some Vallejo Air Gun Gray and I sort of mixed it into the black. So uh, when I applied that, it, it made sort of a metallic black sort of highlight look to the model. It's still not gonna to be too metal looking, I think. It's gonna keep it nice and dark, but it just looks a little shinier. Uh, I actually uh, made a couple of layers of this with uh, adding progressively uh, more uh, gunmetal, and I finished with just pure gunmetal, which I applied only to areas where I wanted there to look like there was a lot of sort of wear and the original black had come off a bit. Now this final step is totally optional, but it's a whole lot of fun and it's something you Get, you can do on this particular uniform that you don't necessarily get to do on a lot of other uniforms and that is to do a lot of weathering and chipping on the helmet. Um, because they were out in the desert with these things a lot, at least presumably, uh, it was like effectively the helmet was getting uh, sandblasted all the time from all the wind and the dust and stuff. So you see in pictures a lot that the helmets that these guys were wearing were a lot more worn and the paint really got knocked off these pretty badly. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I've taken just some German camouflage black brown. I'm very carefully with a number zero brush again, uh, sort of uh, building up chipping and wear sort of around, especially that bottom edge of the helmet, but also on the top. And you can really go pretty far here and it won't look too out of place. Or you can just go for a more subtle look, or you can do none at all and pretend this guy just got recruited and his helmet hasn't been messed up yet. 
I went ahead and took a little bit of gun gray too and just subtly added a few tiny dots here and there in the middle of the brown to show where even the sort of the base uh, coat of brown paint on the helmet had been knocked off down to the bare metal. Okay, so here is my finished sort of World War II German Africa Corps model. I had a lot of fun painting him. He was not uh, too uh, technically difficult. It's a lot more just sort of neutral colors, like we've done a lot of before on this channel, just maybe with some, you know, slightly different shades. But again, with any of this, remember, getting the exact precise shade usually doesn't matter that much, as long as you're sort of in the ballpark. It'll, it'll generally look really good for you. So, you know, don't get too worried. The biggest mistake I think I made on this model was I was not very clever, as I said earlier, with the order in which I painted some things. I really should have done the pants first, then the jacket and boots, uh, then the equipment, and then after that, leather straps on all those things. And I don't know why I did it all out of order this time. But it was, it, it caused me some trouble and it forced me to go back and repaint some areas multiple times. Uh, so, you know, you live and learn and all of us just, sometimes we just are having an off day and we just don't think through things and we sort of do things out of order. I don't know. But, you know, I think he's a, he's a really pretty figure. Again, I'm happy with how he looked and I really think that blue and white scarf is great because I really think it does just add that extra detail to an otherwise pretty... Uh, neutral model and help you know make him a little bit more interesting uh, so as always if you enjoyed this video please like it uh, share it leave me uh, comments with what you thought um, subscribe of course to the channel if you have not gotten a chance to do so already uh, and I think that's all for now so I will see you next time